Choosing a bus protection scheme requires several key considerations. The complexity of bus protection varies considerably depending on such factors as the bus layout, allowed bus switching scenarios, availability of suitable current transformers CTs, and maintenance issues. Buses with statically assigned zone currents are well suited for the use of high impedance bus relaying if suitable CTs are available and do not require disconnect status inputs. For substations with terminals capable of switching between different buses, it is necessary to dynamically assign input currents to the bus zones of protection based on the disconnect auxiliary contact status. To avoid misoperations resulting from disconnect auxiliary contact failures, such substation configurations can require the use of a second trip criterion, such as a check zone. Low impedance numerical relays are especially well suited for protecting more complex bus configurations with dynamic zone selection because they enable zone reconfiguration without any need for corresponding changes to physical CT wiring. While bus differential relaying provides protection for all bus arrangements, fast bus tripping and directional elements can provide adequate protection for some arrangements. Surge arresters and CTs depending on their, their placement, saturation, and ratio generally influence bus protection scheme selection and performance. A variety of methods have been used to implement bus differential relaying schemes. The introduction of digital technology has led to further improvements in bus differential protection. There is considerable variability among common bus configurations in terms of layout and complexity. The simplest configurations in terms of construction and layout are generally the least complex to protect, and this simplicity comes in exchange for less service reliability. Features that increase the service reliability of a bus also tend to necessitate a more complex bus protection scheme. As bus protection complexity increases, more sophisticated relaying is required and additional station information such as disconnect status must be incorporated into the protection scheme. Kirchhoff's current law states that the sum of the currents entering a given node must be equal to the currents leaving that node. For the case of an external fault, the current leaving the bus is equal to the sum of all of the currents entering the bus, and the total summation is zero. The same would be true when considering load flow. On the other hand, for the case of an internal fault, the sum of all of the currents entering the bus is equal to the total fault current summation is not zero. An ideal differential relaying system takes advantage of the fact that the sum of the currents will be zero for external faults or load flow, whereas the sum will be equal to the total fault current for internal fa faults. Unfortunately, there are problems introduced wherein the ideal cannot always be obtained, and steps must be taken to ensure that the differential relaying system works properly, even under non-ideal conditions. Let us discuss basic differential system. The current transformer CTs are all connected with the same ratio and polarity sense so that the currents circulate amongst the CTs ID equals zero for all external faults and load flow whereas the total fault current ID equals IF will flow through the relayer for all internal faults. If the CTs behaved ideally, the differential system would be very easy to implement using a simple overcurrent type of relay. Unfortunately, the CTs may saturate and thus may cause the differential system to operate in other than an ideal way. CT saturation occurs when the flux required to produce the secondary current exceeds the saturation flux density of the core as dictated by the physical dimensions of the CT. Whether or not any given current transformer will saturate is dependent on the following factors, CT ratio, core cross-sectional area, connected burden, magnitude of burden, presence and amount of remnant flux if any, amount and direction of DC offset in the current if any, saturation flux density of the core steel. A typical case of CT saturation is for a fully offset current wave, wave having a time constant of approximately 30 milliseconds. The time to saturation the point where the secondary current starts to distort is dependent on the factors listed above, and can be determined. The important thing to note is that the secondary current can be quite distorted relative to the primary current. In this example, the secondary current is quite distorted for at least 5 cycles. If conditions are severe enough, it is possible that the distortion may be even worse than shown in the example, and that saturation can start to occur even sooner. The CT will eventually come out of saturation and the secondary current will then have the same shape as the primary. How long this take is also dependent on the factors given earlier. It is the distortion in the secondary current that can cause problems in the bus differential circuit and quite possible in other relaying circuits. This circuit is typically representative of a bushing-type current transformer that is wound with fully distributed windings on a toroidal core. It is generally accepted that the leakage reactance in this type of CT is negligible and therefore can be represented as shown with resistive component only. When the CT saturates, saturates, the magnetizing impedance is assumed to go to zero and the secondary current also goes to zero at that time. The effect on relay performance will depend on the type of relay that is being used. Overcurrent relay, an external fault is illustrated. If there is no saturation, the differential current ID will be zero and there will be no tendency for the relay to operate. If there is saturation, ID will not equal zero and a simple overcurrent relay would operate if ID exceeded the setting of the function. 
If complete saturation is assumed not likely, then ID could be calculated. This represents the worst case situation. The overcurrent relay could then be set above this value to prevent operation due to CT saturation. This could require very high settings that may not be sensitive enough to detect the minimum possible bus fault. Another way to overcome the problem would be to introduce time delay to the overcurrent function, but it is difficult to determine exactly how much time is required to prevent operation. Even if the time could be determined accurately, it may be too long from a system point of view, and it could lead to stability problems. High impedance voltage operated differential relay, this relay is applied on the assumption that the CT associated with the faulted feeder carries the total fault current saturates completely. For that condition, the CT can be represented by a simple resistive component toroidal CT. The relay, which is connected across the junction point of the CT has an impedance which is much greater than the total resistance of the CT circuit which is comprised of the CT resistance plus any lead resistance from the junction point to the relay. The voltage VR produced across the relay will then be equal to the drop in the resistance resulting from the total fault current flowing through this resistance. resistance. Calculations are made for each CT circuit to determine the maximum possible voltage that can be developed across the relay assuming total saturation in each circuit. The relay is then set greater than this voltage by a suitable margin. The application of the high impedance differential relay is based on all of the CT being set to the same ratio. In some installations there may be CT of different ratios but with ratio matching taps available to select ratios that match. This could lead to problems in this application because of voltage magnification that results. Depending on the disparity in ratios, the application may be acceptable provided the voltage developed across the full winding of the tap CT does not exceed the rating of the CT, terminal blocks, etc. It may be possible to use auxiliary CT to obtain correct ratio matching but the CT must have the ability to deliver the voltage necessary to produce operation for internal faults. These techniques and other possible solutions are described. It is generally not advisable to connect other devices in the CT circuits used in a high impedance differential scheme because the added burden may increase the tendency for CT saturation or result in a setting that is beyond the range of the high impedance relay. One advantage to using this type of relay is that the junction point of all of the CT can be and should be made in the yard, rather than in the station house. Location of the junction point in the yard minimizes the amount of wiring required and in turn leads to lower settings and thus more sensitive protection. Linear couplers, which have no iron in their core, can be used to overcome the problems caused by CT saturation. These devices have a linear characteristic that produces a voltage in the secondary that is directly proportional to the primary current. For an external fault, the sum of the voltages will be equal to zero or very nearly so. On the other hand, the voltages all add together for an internal fault, thus producing sufficient voltage to operate the relay. These devices provide a rather simple solution for bus protection, and some applications are in existence, but linear couplers have not been widely accepted because of their special characteristics and limited application. Percentage Restrained Differential Relay A percentage restrained differential relay takes cognizance of the fact that there may be error current in the differential circuit. One method of obtaining restrained current. The relay will operate when the differential current ID is greater than some percentage of the total restrained current. The amount of restraint is generally adjustable. The characteristic of the relay is such that as the restraint becomes larger, so does the oper operate or difference current required to produce an output. This type of operation produces the characteristic. The slope of the characteristic is dependent on the percentage restraint setting. The auxiliary CT are selected to provide a common turns ratio. Selection of the stabilizing resistor stab R is based on the sensitivity of the relay, the slope setting that is desired, the largest total resistance in the CT secondary circuits as measured from the main CT to the relay. In other words, the stabilizing resistor is selected so that the operating current will not exceed a set value even in the event total saturation were to occur in the main CT circuit having the highest amount of resistance worst case condition because higher resistance forces more current to flow through the operate circuit. Circuit. This type of relay requires that all of the CT leads be brought into the relay house for connection to the relay. The main CT can also be used to operate other relays provided the added burden is not so large as to preclude selection of a suitable stabilizing resistor. Low impedance current differential, it was pointed out earlier that a low impedance current differential relay used for bus protection would need a very high setting or a significant amount of time delay to prevent misoperation because of CT saturation. It is possible to use a low impedance device if steps are taken to overcome the effects of CT saturation. The currents are shown in oversimplified form and are meant for demonstration purposes only. The CT in line 2 is assumed to saturate completely every half cycle so that the current IX will be as shown. As a result of the collapse of the CT in line 2, the differential current ID will flow. 
The operating current, IOP, is the absolute value of the differential current ID and the restraining current, IRIST, is the sum of the absolute values of all of the currents entering and leaving the junction point of the CT circuits. The key point to note is that the restraint current is significant during the period of non-saturation while the operating current at the same time is equal to or very nearly equal to zero. The relay takes advantage of this condition to prevent operation dur during external faults with significant saturation in the fault CT, but to allow operation during internal faults without any delay. High-speed operation, in the order of 5 to 10 milliseconds, can be obtained for heavy faults. Bus arrangements, in some bus arrangements, it is common to switch lines to different buses in the substation to facilitate operation and maintenance. In this arrangement, the tiebreaker TB is connected to one of the lines through the transfer bus while the regular line breaker is removed from service. The switching of the breakers is accomplished via the line switches LS associated with the breaker to be switched. In the low impedance differential relay described above, auxiliary switches A and B associated with the line switches in certain breakers in some arrangements are brought into the relay and the state of these switches is used by the relay to determine which breakers are connected to which bus so that the correct differential zones can be established. The CT in this situation are always connected to the relay, thus CT switching is not required, because the determination of the zone of protection is done via software in the relay. Separate trip outputs are provided for each breaker thus only those breakers associated with the faulted bus will be tripped at the time of a bus fault one relay can protect multiple buses. All of the common bus arrangements plus more complex arrangements can be handled in addition to the simple main and transfer bus shown above. A novel bus configuration program is used with this relay to allow the user to input their specific bus arrangement. The program then generates wiring diagrams along with specific instructions to allow the relay to be built. The relay contains all of the necessary auxiliary CT to allow ratio matching in the event that different ratio CT are involved in the application. Some of the advantages of using digital technology were noted earlier. Other advantages, as noted below, are also obtained, ability to obtain oscillographic data for faults, metering capability, individual settings for current detection in each feeder, CT supervision secondary open, line switch pole disagreement alarm, breaker failure protection can be included for each breaker. On conclusions, high impedance relays have been used to provide effective, low-cost bus protection for many years, but have limitations in complex bus arrangements and in arrangements involving multi-ratio CT, traditional low impedance current differential relays generally cannot be used because of the problems associated with CT saturation. A digitally implemented, low impedance differential relay, with the wave detection element described earlier, overcomes the effects of CT saturation. Additional benefits are also gained through the use of digital technology. The line differential protection requires to share information between two different stations. CProtect 5, 7SL87 supports the use of conventional instrument transformers in one end, which can be connected to a merging unit that supports 61850-9-2 sample measurement values. On the other end the use of low-power instrument transformers can be connected to the merging unit which supports 61850-9-2 sample measurement values. Based on that configuration the line differential protection 87L can be executed in a secure and stable way. We open Dixie software to configure the Cipratec 5 devices and the merging unit. First, we have a look at the merging units. In one merging unit, we have low power instrument transformer LPIT from Siemens Energy and the second merging unit is connected to a conventional instrument transformer. I will start with the merging unit which will be connected to the LPIT. It is called L51. Please refer to the first process bus video, transformer protection application with process bus.